The Pictish people of ancient Scotland are both intriguing and somewhat unknown. Despite this, there is still plenty we do know about this fascinating people. The Picts occupied the northern and eastern part of ancient Scotland over 1000 years ago, with the Latin name Picti, found in documents between the 3rd and 10th centuries AD. They spoke the Pictish language, surprisingly enough, a now extinct language, thought to have been an insular Celtic language, related to the Brythonic language spoken further south by the Britons. Archaeological research has found that the Picts drank wine, practiced elaborate metalworking, and were connected to ancient European trading routes after discoveries in Rhine and Aberdeenshire. Tableware and storage vessels from Gaul and ancient France and Belgium have also been found in picked land. Archaeologists have also discovered evidence of book production at a Pictish monastery at Port Mahomet. The Picts raised cattle and hunted with dogs and falcons. Meat and milk products are thought to have been a major part of their diet. One of the first references to the Picts in the historical record is in 297 AD, when a Roman writer spoke of the Picts and the Irish, meaning the Scots, attacking Hadrian's Wall. It is thought that the Picts are the descendants of the Caledonians, or Caledoni. However, as the Picti, meaning painted people, was also a name the Romans gave to the northern people of modern-day Scotland, the Caledonians and the Picts may have essentially been the same people. The Romans' reference to painted people may refer to the fact that the Picts seem to have a strong tradition of being heavily tattooed. The Picts were also known as the Crothney in Old Irish and the Prydyn in Old Welsh. Unfortunately, we don't know what these people called themselves. That is one of the issues when researching the Picts. They themselves did not leave vast written records detailing their lives. The Picts, however, left us numerous carved stones, which display patterns, animals, and other insights into the mysterious world. Many Pictish stones were discovered in the village of Aberlemno, Angus, in eastern Scotland, with these stones taking the name of the village. Common symbols used by the Picts include double discs and mirrors. Exactly what these symbols mean is debated. Some theories suggest that the double disc symbolises wheels, such as chariot wheels, or perhaps they are a reference to the sun, which many ancient cultures worshipped. The mirror Pictish symbol is seen by some as a depiction of the soul, or a family tree. Perhaps, however, we are reading too much into these symbols, and most are simply depictions of everyday objects in their world. What do you think these symbols mean? Let me know in the comments below. Aberlemno 1 is probably one of the best preserved Pictish stones we have. The stone contains a serpent, a double disc and Z-rod, and a mirror and comb. A battle scene is depicted in one Pictish stone from the village, with the stone known as the Aberlemno 2. Exactly what battle this stone is depicting is unclear. Some argue that it depicts a battle between the Picts and the Vikings, whereas others argue that Northumbrians are present in the scene. Pictish stones have also been found in Rose Marquay in the Black Isles, with the most famous stone known as the Rose Marquay Stone. These stunning stones demonstrate Pictish stone art, and they have been interpreted in a Christian light. The Picts also made various brooches, including the Regart brooch, which was made from silver and glass. In Pictland, it is thought that kingship was traced from the mother's line. Originally, the Picts were thought to have practiced a form of Celtic polytheism, where they worshipped 
various Celtic gods. The Picts eventually converted to Christianity, although the date of this transition is unknown, but it was probably gradually. The Picts fought against many peoples during their time, including the Romans and the Angles. In 685, the Pictish king Bridey won an important battle in Pictish history against the Northumbrians, who were led by his cousin, King Edrith, at the Battle of Dunnectain. It was fought, in part at least, in retaliation against many Picts being slaughtered by the Northumbrians. Certain scholars have argued that Pictland was divided into seven separate Pictish kingdoms, although one or two kings were thought to have ruled all the seven kingdoms. But more on this in a future video. Thanks for watching. Please support this work through buymeacoffee.com and Patreon. All the links are in the description below. Through buymeacoffee.com, you can make small or large one-off donations that help support this work, with there also being an option to make recurring donations every month. Through Patreon, you will gain exclusive access to participate in my bi-monthly Q&A, the ability to vote in exclusive polls, and your name will be included in a special thank you message in each of my videos, all for as little as £1 per month. The link to the Patreon page of Celtic History Decoded is in the description below. Please also remember to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell so that you're notified every time I post a video. And remember to follow Celtic History Decoded on Instagram and Twitter. If you're interested in history in general, subscribe to my other channel, History Decoded. Thank you, speak to you soon.